and welcome to Track Topper. In this session, you are going to learn the IVHL Physics Topic 1.2, which is Uncertainties and Errors. Errors in a system, in an experiment, can be, or we can say in the measurement, can be of two types. Number one is a systematic error. Systematic error basically biases your measurement in the same direction. That means either it will give you too large or too small a value. Let's take, for example, there is a weighing scale. And in that weighing scale that you have at home, so might be that even when nobody is there or nothing is there on that scale, it might still give you a reading of 200 grams. That means when you will keep something on it to weigh or you stand on it to weigh, then you are going to get an extra reading of 200 grams. So you will always have to subtract this 200 grams from that weighing scale. So that means it is giving extra. It might also be possible that this weighing scale is giving, this was an extra reading or it gives you a reading of, it's like, below the zero point it's towards the left so it is giving you 100 grams less reading that means whenever you are going to do the measurement with that weighing scale in the final reading you will add so in case it is giving you 200 grams extra reading then you will get the actual reading by subtracting that 200 grams right so whatever reading you get from that you subtract 200 grams in case you are getting 100 grams less it is already towards left, then whatever will stand on it, it will give you 100 grams less reading. So your actual reading will be the weight that you get on it. In that, you will add 100 grams. So such types of errors are systematic errors, which are already there in the system. You have a broken scale and something like that, right? Those are systematic errors. So there you can just check how much error it is introducing and sometimes you can correct the measurement. But random errors are basically introduced due to the observation error most of the times. For example, you are checking out the um, value of G or time period of something. So might be you press the you start the stopwatch a little later or you end the stopwatch a little later. So you will see that in all 20 readings, you are going to get a different answer. That is an uh, error caused by the observation of the person. So that is a random error. Okay, now these are the two types of errors. Then comes the uncertainty. So whatever we have measured in that, there is some uh, instrumental uh, uncertainty as well. So we say the uncertainty in the reading is an basically uh, or in an instrument is like uh, you just add or subtract half of the smallest width of graduations on the instrument. Let's say for example you have a centimeter scale. So all of you know that on a centimeter scale you have a marking of one centimeter to two centimeters. So you go from one then you have two here. So that is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That makes it two. So there are ten small graduations which give you one centimeter. So what is the smallest value that this is going to read? The smallest value that your scale will read is one millimeters, right? This distance, the width of one grad between two small graduations. So one millimeter is the smallest distance it is going to measure. So what is the uncertainty in this instrument in a scale? That uncertainty is going to be plus minus half of this, that is 0 0.5 millimeters. That is the uncertainty. Now that is generally uh, the uncertainty which we get just by doing this plus minus half that means either it is plus 0.5 extra or minus 0.5 less that's an uncertainty in any instrument now we have two types of uncertainties one is the absolute and one is the fractional uncertainty the absolute uncertainty is given as uh, maybe we can say the uncertainty that you get in the original value so it is always written with the unit also for example suppose you are measuring uh, some sort of force in something so you get a force of 2.5 newton you have the readings of 2.8 newton you have the reading of 2.6 newton so what is how are you going to find the uncertainty we first have to find the mean of this 
what is the mean or the average value of the given readings that will give us the most appropriate value now you know how to find the mean that is 2.5 plus 2.8 plus 2.6 and all, sum of all observations divided by 3 which is the number of observations so that gives me 2.63 newtons now that's my mean Okay, now how do I find the absolute uncertainty? For that, I'll find what is the range of values I have. Range of values means what is the maximum measurement I got and what is the minimum measurement I got. So that is 2.8 minus 2.5, which gives me 0 0.3 Newton. So this range will be divided among the positive and the negative sides as equal halves. So we can say there is an Therefore, there is an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.15, right? So, there's an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.15 Newton. But we are here, have, we are supposed to round it off to one significant, one decimal place, as you can see here among all of these. So, we will have to write it as 0 0.15. 2 Newton. That is the absolute uncertainty. So, how would I write my force? How would I write my force? That means, so my force value, I will write it as 2.63 Newtons, which I will round it off to, of course, 2.6 Newton as the mean value. And in that, plus minus 0 0.2 Newton. So, this means, I how do I write the final value of F? That's the actual value a and plus minus delta a then this delta a is the absolute error uh, absolute uncertainty but if we have the fractional uncertainty the fractional uncertainty is obtained by dividing this absolute uncertainty sorry when you divide the absolute uncertainty by the true value when you divide the absolute uncertainty by the true value or original value of the number given. For example, in this case, what is my actual value that I'm going to use? That is 2.6 because that's my average I got. So this is my actual value of the force, which is 2.6. And what is the uncertainty, absolute uncertainty I got? 0 0.2. So therefore, what is going to be my fractional uncertainty here? So the fractional uncertainty would be delta A over A, absolute uncertainty, which is 0 0.2 upon the original value, which I have is 2.6. So this gives me 0 0.077. Generally, we don't look for this number. We rather prefer to multiply this with 100 and get the percentage uncertainty. Therefore, percentage uncertainty will be the fractional uncertainty multiplied by 100. That's delta A by A times 100, which gives me 0 0.077 times 100. And I get a percentage uncertainty of 7.7. .7. Now, this is how you find the uncertainties, the fractional and the absolute uncertainty. Next thing we need to know is that if we have the values where you have delta A, sorry, suppose we have a number A is equal to B plus C or A is equal to B minus C, then how do we find the absolute uncertainty in A that will be Either it is plus C or minus C, your answer would be delta B plus delta C. That means to find the absolute uncertainties, just add all the individual uncertainties, right? So whether they are added or subtracted, you will just add all the individual uncertainties. Now, for the multiplication and division, so if you have a number as A is equal to B times C or a is equal to B upon C. Then what do we do? In that case, we find the fractional uncertainty and fractional uncertainty in A will be delta A by A will be equal to delta B by B plus delta C by C. Whether it is the product of B and C or it is the quotient of B and C. But you will add them. You will add the fractional uncertainties. And if 
so this was the first rule this is the second rule and if there is a power like let's say there is a volume which is l cube then how do we find the uncertainty in the volume that will be delta v by v this 3 comes here times delta l by l so these are certain rules to find the fractional and uncertainties and all you have to do is find the absolute error, uh, absolute uncertainty, divide by the original. Just remember these rules that whether they are added or subtracted, the absolute uncertainties will be added. Similarly, if they are multiplied or divided, the fractional uncertainties will be added. And if there is a power, that comes as the multiple of the fractional uncertainties. That is all you need to know about uncertainties. I hope the video was helpful. In the next video session, you will learn about the vectors.